What's happening guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So tonight was the Genesis 2018 show and it was very good. I really enjoyed this top to bottom. We had three championship matches take place. A fourth was a live looking, well, actually not really a live looking, just a look in from Pro Wrestling Noah where Taiji Ishimori defended against Andrew Everett. But uh, yeah, overall a really solid show to push us off to the new set of tapings, which will take place next week. Uh, this was the last show from the Canada tapings back in November, and next week we start the Orlando tapings that started that happened two weeks ago. So we open the show with a video package. I don't know who created this package, but I absolutely enjoyed the hell out of it. It was just really well done. The music was good, the visual was good, and it was just to hype the show tonight and kind of gave us a glimpse into the future. Um, I'm pretty sure it was the new guys in charge that were doing this, so if this is what is in store for the future, I am 100% on board. So we open the show with the Grand Championship match with EC3 defending the Grand Championship against Matt Seidel. So Matt Seidel wanted this match with no rounds, no judges, because he felt that EC3 used all those things to his advantage. Um, this was a fun match. Really good pace to it, I felt. Uh, a couple good spots. Seidel went for a Hurricane Rana, and it was reversed into a sit-out powerbomb. He ended up going to the top rope for another Hurricane Rana, but... EC3 was able to kind of drop down and get out of the way, and Seidel went crashing down into the ring. He landed awkwardly, so he was selling the neck after that. So obviously EC3 was focused on the neck. Um, and of course, much like this feud has had, EC3 was constantly mocking Matt Seidel, calling him a choke artist. So the end of the match saw, I should say the finish of the match saw, EC3 going up top for a super TK3. Seidel reverses it, hits a sunset flip powerbomb. EC3 goes into the ring. Seidel goes up, hits a shooting star press, and we have a new grand champion. So this was, like I said, a really good match to open the show. I like the idea of Seidel as the grand champion. Up next, we have the Knockouts Championship match with Laurel Van Ness defending the title against Ali. So Ali got this title opportunity from winning a number one contendership match a few weeks back. So, like I said this in the beginning, that I really enjoyed the show. I thought this match was good as well. Ali started off on the offensive, battling. They, they fought for a little while on the outside, Eventually, went back inside. Laurel started controlling the match. Laurel hit a nice draping DDT. Allie was able to start to mount a comeback. She hit Laurel with a suplex into the turnbuckle. Uh, Allie then hit a code breaker. Laurel was able to kick out. I didn't really care that much for her kicking out of it. I, generally, it's booked pretty strong. But after that, Laurel hits a curb stomp which Allie kicks out of, so they were kind of trading near falls back and forth. Allie hits a super kick, goes for the pin. Laurel's able to get her foot on the bottom rope. The two of them get up, kind of fight back and forth. Allie gets elbowed. She bumps the referee. Ref gets dazed. Laurel picks up the championship belt, hits Allie with it, picks up the victory, and she is still your knockout champion. So up next, we have... Bobby Lashley with American Top Team members, Dan Lambert and KM versus Moose. So obviously KM and Lambert were on the outside of the ring. And of course, to no one's surprise, they had to get involved in the match. But uh, so this match I really didn't care too much about, to be completely honest, just because of the whole American Top Team storyline. I'm sure a lot of people are with me on this as I've seen your comments and it just didn't seem like it got over well with the fans. But so this is a pretty even match for the beginning anyway. Um, of course, KM had to get involved. Moose jump was bouncing off the ropes. KM grabbed his foot. 
Lashley knocked Moose down. Lashley gets out of the ring. Him and KM kind of have words because Lashley says he can do this on his own. So Lashley and Moose, after a little while, battle back out to, outside the ring. Moose gets thrown into the steps. Lashley goes back in the ring. KM goes to take advantage of Moose, who's on the ground. Lashley sees this, comes on the outside, grabs Moose, goes to the other side of the ring where he beats him up. KM grabs a table, puts it in the ring. This distracts Lashley. Moose is able to take advantage of this. He gets on the offensive, hits the go to hell. Lashley's able to kick out. Lashley then surprisingly hits a Hurricane Rana followed by a spear. Once he does this, he goes for the pin. Moose is able to get his foot on the bottom rope. At this point, KM gets up on the apron and distracts Lashley. Moose pushes Lashley into KM. KM hits the ground. Uh, Lashley's uh, Moose hits the game changer, gets a three count, and that's it. Um, so after the match, Lashley is pulled to the outside. Lambert starts yelling at him, saying this is all his fault. KM was just trying to help you. So Lashley ends up hitting KM with a spear. Then he throws Dan Lambert into the ring. Moose ends up getting the table, setting it up in the corner. Lashley spears Lambert through the table. Lashley and Moose shake hands. And then they both beat up John Hartnett. Um, like I said, I had no interest in this match to begin with, but... Just so much happened in the match, and it was enjoyable to see. So up next, we had the look-in from Pro Wrestling Noah with Andrew Everett trying to win the title from Taiji Ishimori, the exhibition title, that is. Uh, so we only got to see a portion of this match. It was a look-in toward the end of the match. Uh, what we got to see was Everett missing a corkscrew moonsault. Right after that, though, he hits a Hurricane Rana. Ishimori is just on the ground, looks down and out. Everett goes for a shooting star press. Ishimori puts his knees up. Eventually, Ishimori hits the double knees and the 450 splash for the win. Uh, I wish we could have seen this match to its entirety because it looked like a decent match. Um, both these men are very capable of putting on a good match. Uh, I had looked it up, and apparently the actual match lasted about 15 minutes, where this one went four minutes, which is actually funny with the time length because the Grand Championship match went about 15 minutes as well, considering the Grand Championship matches usually are much, much shorter. So that brings us to our main event of Eli Drake defending his global championship against Johnny Impact and Alberto El Patron in the Six Sides of Steel. This match was... With the stipulation that if Eli retains his title, both Johnny and Alberto will no longer get a title shot as long as Eli is the champion. So, to start off the match, Eli and Alberto El Patron both double-teamed Johnny Impact. Not a surprise. Of course, they can't work together too long. The two start battling. Um, not really going to go into detail of what happened throughout the whole match. Just a couple of spotlights. Uh... Johnny was in the tree of woe position. Alberto went to the top, went for the double stomp. Johnny was able to maneuver out of the way. Eli started getting momentum after he hit a double low blow. Uh, he, at one point, he went to throw Johnny into the cage, but Johnny kind of ran, used his feet to jump off the cage and roll out of the way. So it, it was pretty cool. Johnny, of course, he, being the high-risk man in the match, did a flying crossbody off the top of the cage. So toward the end of the match, Eli and Johnny were fighting up toward the top of the cage. Uh, Alberto was trying to escape out the door. Johnny jumps down, attacks Alberto, goes back over to Eli as they battle on top of the cage some more. Alberto ends up seeing his opportunity to go out the door again. Chris Adonis, of course, makes himself involved in the match, slams the door on Alberto's face. Johnny and Eli at this point are trying to climb down the cage on the outside. Adonis runs over, kind of grabs 
Johnny Impact off the cage. Eli is able to jump down, and he retains the title because Johnny was unable to get his feet to touch the ground. But uh, that was that. It was a very quick show. Felt quick, I should say. Um, like I said, we had one, two, three, four, five matches with the look-in from Pro Wrestling Noah. Very enjoyable show. I always love these TV specials because it's it's like a basically a TV pay-per-view where it's just matches, no filler. Um, and next week we have the start of everything new, which is funny because toward the end of the show, Josh Matthews was saying that next week's going to look a little different. I was like, that's it? Really? We're, we're changing rings completely? Everything's going to look completely different. Um, but yeah, that I am, I'm very happy the Canada tapings are over because that was a completely different part of this company. Um, so many things have changed since then. And for, from what I've read through the tapings, it seems like people were saying a lot of good things about the matches and things going on. We have a lot to get through until the next tapings. A lot of changes in the company are coming, so definitely going to be some growing pains, but enjoyable nonetheless. So I will see you guys Saturday for the Impact Report. If you like what you saw here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.